Hello and uh, welcome to the latest edition of Business Spotlight podcast. I'm joined today by Darren Talbot and he's the founder of uh, 2020 Community Cricket. Um, it's really exciting to have somebody involved in coaching and sports on the call, Darren. So so welcome. And um, let's find out a little bit about your, your, your journey uh, to being a coach and a business owner. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, it, it was a bit of a... A strange journey, really, because I was a decent cricketer when I was younger. Um, didn't make it as a professional um, and did my degree, uh, which I did in business and marketing, and then stumbled into the city because my dad sort of worked in that same industry in, in mutual funds um, and gradually built up a career from there. I joined a company. Literally, I finished university on the Friday and started on the Monday, um, but it was a tiny company and I was doing everything from opening the front door to the post to the to the teas and coffees and and then all of a sudden I was uh, building them an IT network because the three directors who were fairly senior of years didn't have a clue how to do that uh, I'm not sure I did really but I I, I, learned, I taught myself and I did it and I built them a database and I, I kind of just developed in a in a small company and had the opportunity to do pretty much everything um, which looking back was a was a really good grounding and then by the time I, I, I came to the end of my city journey, uh, I was an investment analyst for quite a, quite a good sized company, uh, placing large deals and doing risk analysis and, and building some lots of complex spreadsheets. But yeah. um, unfortunately, it wasn't really for me. And uh, my, my body eventually started telling me it wasn't for me. And I got signed off by the GP for, for three, three months with stress. Um, and I was probably in a place where I couldn't go, but I couldn't get on a train. I couldn't get on a train, I couldn't commute. I, I couldn't go anywhere near an office building. I, I was I was in a bad way. So having had a bit of a payoff from, from the company, I had to find something else to do and obviously replace a city salary. My wife wasn't working at that time. <clears throat> um, so bringing up our daughter and I thought, okay. Um, I thought, I said to my wife, I said, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a bit of cricket coaching because I was already a qualified cricket coach by then. Uh, and I'm just going to spend the summer clearing my head. And pretty early on in that journey, I discovered that state school cricket was pretty much non-existent. And I felt this was a project for me. I had no other great plan other, around that, other than the fact that I knew I needed to earn some money. Probably I worked out by then I had to work for myself because I think a lot of the stress challenges I had were working for other people who I didn't overly gel with. Um, so at that point, this was 2007, I decided that I was going to set up a cricket business. Uh, and it's just kind of grown from there, really. We, we started doing after-school clubs, the sort of standard stuff that coaches do. Um, and I, I wanted to do a bit more than that. Having done French and German A-levels at school, I wanted to do some stuff in Europe. Um, and I ended up being national coach of Iceland for three years. Um, I ran death cricket for eight years, which was a fantastic project. Um, and over COVID time, I was head of cricket for Sierra Leone. Um, which was a which was a really bizarre job selecting teams over over videos and things like that. Um, and 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 sort of fast forwarding up to now, I spend more of my time now as a consultant really to cricket clubs, helping them with uh, with best practice mm. and helping them to shape their committees, shape their cricket clubs into the best it possibly can be. So mm. yeah, it's it's been a huge journey, but it's been a massively rewarding one. Do you have a team around you, Darren? Um, people working with you, or you, is this a, a one-person band? No, I've I've got a team. I've now got eight coaches working for me pretty much full time. I've got a finance manager who's a, who's a freelance, and I've got an operations manager who works for me full time as well. Yeah. So I've got a I've got a team of people. For the first, well, the first three or four years, it was just me running around like a like a fly trying to um, trying to do everything. Mm. Um, I was good at lots of things. Marketing worked for me fine. Finance was not one of my strengths. Every every course I did when I did my investment management certificate, the the accounting bit I had to do three or four times. Uh, when I was doing my degree, the accounting bit I had to do three or four times, which is weird given I'm a numbers person, but accounts, I, I couldn't get it. So I, I pretty soon worked out that if I was going to really make a success of it, I had to surround myself with people that could fill the gaps in my knowledge levels and and ability levels and I've, I've done that both with the finance manager and with the operations manager who's got a fantastic eye for detail whereas I'm more of a creative and uh, I like to set something up and then 
as quickly as possible, get someone to run it and move on to the next thing. But he's he, I call him my anchor. Um, he 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 pulls me back down to earth when I when I start going off on uh, on on tangents. But yeah, a good team of people is to me essential. I'm get I'm getting a sense um, from what you're saying. A couple of interesting things have jumped out a bit. Looking at it through my eyes as a as a business coach, and the first thing that really jumps out is that you understood that you needed to learn to earn, and if that required some resilience and going back and having a go at it on more than one occasion, then so be it. It's the Pareto principle, isn't it? You need to at least understand the 20% to enable you to have the conversation of the 80% of the, you know, the remaining information. So the first thing is, is about your learning. The second, you, the phrase you used is, I surrounded myself with people who could do it better than, than I, or words to that effect. So you clearly see the importance of having the right team on board around you in the business sense, as well as in the coaching sense. Yeah, I, I, I've done a, I did a lot of, you're right, a lot of learning. I learned how to build a website. I learned how to do Google AdWords, use social media, all, all those kind of things. But one of the things that, that I think has been most useful, um, my wife has done a lot of reading around brain dominance, um, sort of Jungian principles of, of that. And I've worked out that from that learning, and you can take this however you want. I know some people like this, some people don't. But the, the, the principles are that the, the brain split into four quarters and, and most of us fit neatly into, into one quarter. So entrepreneurs are generally are frontal right, accountants and finance people generally basal lefts, and the opposites are generally where, where you, you have a problem. And that kind of highlights with me that as a creative, I struggle with the account stuff. So I kind of worked out from that how to meet people and fairly quickly work out their likely brain dominance and then from that, trying to create a company that has the whole brain. Um, so uh, as well as the, me being a frontal right, I've got some nice, warm, cuddly people that love looking after the kids. They're the basal rights. I've got my operations manager, who, who's my, my frontal left, who I can send him a manual and he'll he'll digest it and give me all the detail, whereas I'll look at it and the words will start jumping around. I, I can't stand it. Darren, Darren the, the reason I've got such a broad smile on my face is because um, I run two businesses and the second business is exactly what you've just described. It's profiling people by their, their, their four core, we call them communication styles, but it's 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 exactly the same thing. So uh, th this is my area of expertise. I'm really passionate about it. Um, and it's fascinating to hear you talk about looking at the the whole team wheel. We use team wheels to see where people are in terms of their dominance, whether they're extroverts, introverts, task focused, people focused, whether they need reassurance or, you know, detailed instructions or all those kind of things that you're talking about. So that's why I'm smiling on that. I think that's a, that's a really important, crucial part of your business. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, pe pe I think people are the business, either either because they're your clients yeah. And you need to understand mm -hmm. your clients, as many of them as quickly as possible, as well as possible. Yeah. And also your team, because you don't want too many square pegs in round holes for too long, yeah. because that's when that's when the wheels come off. And um, again, when we take people on, I've generally got a pretty good idea where they fit, but then we'll, we'll test them out with a few few different tasks. And pretty quickly, we'll be like, OK, okay that's probably not their strength. Uh, maybe I'll take that back and I'll give them something that they're better at. And mm. I, I quite enjoy that, really, because... I like working with people. I like talking to people. And you, you, if you treat people with respect and try and give them the best for them you possibly can do, that can only help your business. Yeah. So you're you're describing an awful lot of resilience and focus and a business built essentially out of necessity. What what else do young entrepreneurs or people starting up their own business need to be aware of if they're if they're building something from scratch, in your opinion? Well, you, you, you've got to stick your neck out. Um, if you don't put your head above the parapet, you're, you're never going to... You've got to make mistakes, essentially. And I made many, many mistakes. I wasted a whole lot of money on getting an office because I felt we needed an office. Um, and then I found that, actually, I still didn't want to go into an office. And it sat largely dormant with a with a longish lease that I was paying money out for. Um, and you have to invest as well. And... I probably, I had a good good size payoff for my company, but that went and I prob I would have, I have borrowed well over a hundred thousand pounds on that journey to get to where I am now, where the business is 
not mm. only solvent but absolutely thriving mm. but the first 10 years of what's now 17 year journey was hell it was absolute hell um i've never experienced stress like it and the funny thing is when i was in it i didn't i didn't know my wife knew um and when we talk about it now uh the last five six years in particular it's like i'm a different human being but i you know we, we chat about this a lot and we both agree that you have to go through that pain to get to where you want to go to if you know you can make the business a success and i was always confident that what i was doing was the right thing for me and it was the right thing for what people needed but living with all that debt for all that time was very 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 tough indeed hmm. it's a different mindset isn't it when you come out of corporate and it's your own business um and you know i, I i've i've had to counsel clients in the past on money mindset issues because they think, well, I don't want to borrow in my private life, so I'm not going to borrow in my business. But actually, it's two entirely different situations and and philosophies, really, about that. And ideally, you want other, you want borrowed money to to be able to to, to launch a business, put other money's p- people's money into it. But it again, it requires bravery and it requires tracking and planning and following the performance and thinking about the strategy then and how you're going to apply the money and what you're going to use it for. So it's really interesting. So what, what I'm getting from you is the challenges of building a business and the ones that you faced personally as well, but also the rewards, they seem to come hand in hand. Yeah. Re- rewards is an interesting one because uh, one, one of the reasons I struggled in the city was that I've never been motivated by money. Money has never been something, you know, I was earning a good salary, but, you know, bought me some nice things occasionally, but I, it, it didn't, it didn't excite me and it still doesn't. And that's why I kind of, I can't remember how long, it must be about 12 or 13 years ago, decided that the current business I'm running needs to be not for profit because I wasn't trying to get profit. I was just trying to do good things for people, uh, okay. whether it's my staff or my clients. Um, and and so I think money's an odd thing that for different people will perceive it in different ways. Yeah. What the, what 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 people are actually measuring, I think, is value is one, rather than cost and money and purpose. And you know, finances can unlock purpose, can't they? If you're if you're about helping people, then a healthy business is more able to help people than an unhealthy business. So it's really about the motive, not about the purpose of it. I think yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So what, uh, yeah. So what's the future for for your 2020 community cricket organization? What are your what are your what's your vision for growth? Where you want to go? That that that's a really good question. Um I'm I'm not one to turn down opportunities. When an opportunity raises its ugly head, or beautiful head maybe, uh, I, I always grab it and then work try and work out as quickly as possible what I'm going to do with it. So I, I tend to have a have a sort of a yes policy. And someone says, "Oh, can you do?" So, for example, I was approached by one of the European cricket boards last week to help them set up deaf cricket. Um, I suspect there'll be no financial benefit in that at all. Um, emotional benefit will be huge um and and so i'm very much uh here i am pe- people starting to know pretty well who i am and what i do and uh c- come and tell me what you want we'll have a conversation and that's how the business will, will continue um we're, we're very fortunate that what we're delivering i think is pretty good uh, i've got some excellent people around me um and so w- word of mouth i think this is n- another thing that i think is a is a very strong message to to businesses is that word of mouth is the most powerful marketing tool you can possibly have for many many years i was advertising and practically begging to get clients in the early days uh whereas now our clients do that for me. we we have people coming to us regularly oh i've heard about this uh we, we'd love to get involved um and that's not followed by a question on how much is it or where is it it's we want to get involved because we've been told this is good and i think any business can get to the stage uh that get to the stage where people are coming to you because 
everyone's talking about how good it is, that's when that's when you're in a good place. But I don't believe in complacency and I'm always checking, double checking, treble checking what we're doing and seeing if we can do it better because I think the worst thing you can do is go, brilliant, cracked it, that's it, excellent, we're sorted because things change regularly uh, and I'm always looking for, for what's next. Darren, that's a brilliant note to end this on. I think it's really been a pleasure, a delight talking to you today and um, I wish you all the best for the future. Thank you.